Hey, this is DJ Jazzy Jeff, and we're talking about my sound pack in Survival Studio. I think my entrance point is always drums first. Like, you know, you can have the greatest sample in the world, and if the beat is not good, then it's not gonna make it. Because you can have a wacky song, but have a dope beat, and you're good. Right? You like that? That was a good answer? Cool. Just gonna frolic in the dirt, aren't you? When Will went to LA and came back and said, hey, I got a TV show, he came to me and was like, Quincy Jones is trying to find a theme song. And I was like, there is absolutely no way that you're gonna be on a TV show and we not do the theme song. I just grabbed this drum kit and I made the beat and played all of the keys and Will sat down and he wrote it. And I did a rough mix and we sent it off and they used it. They used my mix, <laughs> they used everything and never changed it. People have so much love for that song to think that that song was done in 15 minutes and the only reason that I let it go is I thought that this was just pretty much gonna be a placeholder and we were gonna come back and revisit it and it never was. So sometimes what you do right here is what's gonna be here forever. That's really deep for a 15 minute beat. The funny thing about DJing and producing is they share the same brain. They just don't share my same brain. And I don't know if it's a gift or a curse, but I, I kind of wish that my brains kind of worked a little bit more in unison. And Serato Studio has really helped me out a lot with that because I'm sharing the same library that I DJ with, that I'm making music with. So it kind of makes me say, you know what, I could really make this edit and play this tonight. And then that kind of turns into, okay, I made this edit and it's really dope. Now I can give it to somebody else so that they can play it tonight. Most of the stuff that I've done over the past year started in studio. Serato Studio is probably the fastest program that I've ever used because sometimes you can have programs that are a little bit more tedious and you see your idea just kind of float away. I just appreciate the, the, the speed because it allows me to get my first idea out. When I read the quote in Todd Henry's book and he was like, you should not die with anything creative left inside of you, that really resonated with me. I've had way too many instances in my life. Somebody heard something that wasn't meant to be heard and they convinced me to put it out and it changed my life. Sometimes we stop ourselves from letting an idea out. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. If they would have told me that this was going to be the final record, that would have been nowhere near what that record would have sounded like. So I'm trying to do that purposefully now. You know, just kind of like, listen, you know, I don't know what's going to happen in the next 15 minutes. I'm just going to bang this out. Having a lot of vintage gear, I wanted to pick some of my favorite sounds, you know, very warm and rich basses, you know, a mini mood, a Rhodes patch. Some of them have different effects. A Wurlitzer patch, a clav patch, arp strings, that is almost kind of like a soulful library. You want to put this together for people to make music with and hopefully not replace any of the sound. I have always been somebody that I really love authentic sounds. I am not the keyboard horn guy. I love my sounds to be 100% real or 100% fake. Either be a horn or don't be a horn. Don't try to be a horn and not sound like one. I remember I got a pack of drums from Teddy Riley that he gave me. I gotta give Teddy a lot of credit, you know, and he was also one of those guys that was kinda like, I got some drums for you. You know, I think that's probably why I'm so free giving away drum sounds and stuff like that because, you know, it, it was done for me. None of these things are actually mine. You know, we are all going around and we're mining for samples and you're mining for drum sounds and you're collecting them. But it's kind of like, you know, we're gonna give it away in the music. Why not give it away to some of the creators that, that make the music? I think that the, the great producers that I love, it's never about the equipment. Premier is using the same thing he used 20 years ago. I'm unfortunately a geek that I love technology and I love the fact 
I have algorithms that I can make any song fit into any tempo and warp it to make anything beat on beat, you know? And it kind of puts you back in the mode of, it's really about the music, you know? I don't know too many people other than people like myself that start going down the rabbit hole asking them what program and what compressor and all. I don't know any music fan that cares about that. They, it's, if the song is good or if the song is bad. Like that's all they care about. I enjoy remixing just as much as I do production. I'm very good at not letting the original song guide my direction. When you don't have access to vocalists, sometimes it's really good to have that acapella folder and just say, okay, this is my vocalist. Now what would I do? if I produce this song. It's actually a good training, you know, for when you have artists and, and how you would kind of mold and shape stuff. And it's even cool because you can actually throw a acapella in studio and do the remix around it, not after it. Like you don't have to make the beat first. You can put the remix in and start making a beat around the acapella. Trying to figure out the best song is like trying to figure out your favorite kid. Yeah, that's really hard. Like I. Brand New Funk was one of my favorite songs. I absolutely hated the mastering of that record. Like, I cringe when I hear that record because that was one of the early lessons. First album, you kind of walked out of the studio before the song was mixed and the mix came out and you didn't like it. Okay, nope, I'm never leaving. I'm gonna make sure that the mix ends up exactly how I want it. I never understood that the mastering process was a, was a thing. I, I fought with the engineers on Brand New Funk to push the 808 out. This was pre-people making the 808 the main focal point of the record. You know, they went against everything that they believed because I'm like, this is a sound that I'm going for. And we mixed it perfectly. And when they sent it to the mastering lab, the mastering guy was like, oh my God, they made a mistake and turned the 808 up and he turned it down. Favorite record? not favorite sounding record. Listen, you need to check out my sound pack and Serato Studio. We got some dope drums. We got some dope instruments. I put some scratches in there. Listen, you need that. You need to check that out. Serato Studio. My pack. Jeff's pack. Hey, Remix. Come here. Come here. Come here. One snack? I shouldn't have to bribe you, dude. Come here. Come here, man. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Can you sit down? I know you just want me to rub your butt.